AI art has been taking over the internet lately. You've probably seen images like this from your friends and influencers alike. And in the last video, even though I said things like this, and I personally support trying to use commission artists when you can, that's just how I see the future of AI art becoming. Why commission artists are a bit upset at this trend. And I don't think it's unwarranted. I still don't doubt that this might mean trouble for commission artists in the future. People still thought I was defending the use of AI art and the greedy corporations behind them and that I didn't do a fair job of presenting both sides of the argument. And you know what? I agree with you. I think I could have presented the artist side a lot better, so this is what we're gonna do today. So if you wanna watch the first one, you can, but you don't have to, to understand this video. So let's get into why AI art is problematic. Before we jump right in, I do want to preface this video with saying that I was a former freelancer. I did graphic design and web design, so I didn't say that in the last video because I didn't think my background in that mattered because I wasn't an artist artist. I did draw things from time to time for my job, but in my brain I was thinking of the more traditional freelance commission artist. The first thing a lot of people have a problem with is that AI scrapes millions of images to learn from to make the AI art. The problem is, who owns those images that it learns from? Well, it's everyone. It scrapes everything from people's art to medical documents that have somehow made its way online. And that's the thing, right? Because although I likened it to the machine learning being like how we get inspired by millions and millions of images that we've seen across our lifetime and develop it into our own style, what really is inspiration versus machine learning. Plus, there's a lot of arguments floating around about if it's fair use and transformative and the use of copyright, which I don't know because I'm not a copyright lawyer. So I'm not gonna get into the laws today, but the image scraping of copyrighted images is definitely concerning. The truth is, is that AI art relies on human artists. AI is like a little poopy baby with no object permanence until you feed it a bunch of shit to go off of. It couldn't exist without human artists. And in my opinion, I think that's good enough reason for artists to get royalties for opting into their works being used to train the AI. On the other hand, a lot of what I've read from you guys, it seems a lot of the AI argument would settle down a bit if the AI was only trained on public domain images. Which gets deeper into the argument about theft. <laughs> There is one glaring issue with all of this AI art stuff, and that's if you give it the prompt in the style of after something you want it to make. This is a big problem. If you don't want to go commission a, an art piece from a certain artist, why not just go to an AI and type in the style of popular artist here and get a new piece of work that way? Hey man, that sucks. Some people will say in argument to that, well, you can't copyright a style. And while that's true, a lot of the generated works in the style of are very, very obviously based off of one person's specific style, regardless if it generates something new that we haven't seen before. Regardless if you think that it's theft, it is definitely unequivocally questionable and unethical at best. There's also something in the art community called Draw This In Your Style, where someone will post an original piece of work and prompt other artists to draw this in your style. Other artists will take that work and qu uh, literally draw it in their own style. I'm sorry, that was a shitty explanation. This is a little different because the original artist is literally consenting and asking for people to get inspired and build off of their work. Unlike AI that doesn't get inspired and create something brand brand new, but bases what it wants to make off of what you feed it and what it's learned from. So I can see how those two concepts of inspiration versus machine learning mesh a little bit, but I also see how it is very, very different. Another smoking gun argument that artists have brought up are the watermarks that you see in a lot of AI generated images online. I don't know if it's directly, you know, drawing a lasso tool around something, copying and pasting it. It is definitely, definitely telling that it's using copyrighted images in order to learn from. Because a lot of these watermarks that you see are butchered and look weird and almost dystopian. And that ties back into the ethics of, hey, 
can you even use a bunch of copyrighted artists' work to learn from and create something of its own, even if the output is an original piece of work? Because what happens is the AI learns that artwork has watermarks on it and tries to replicate that. And like I said before, artists whose art is being used to have the machine learn from should be getting commission royalties from that. Which brings me to talk more about money, money, money. Call me Abba. And this is really the bigger, bigger issue. Money, 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 bigger, bigger issue. More money, more problems. I am promise I'm not 35 years old making that reference. The bigger issue is that corporations, like always, will be taking advantage of this technology. It may be not now, but definitely in the future. But actually, it, it is happening now. And that's with the popular app Lenza, who is the facilitator who's made popular all of these AI magic portraits. Like I said in my last video, Lenza is based off an open source model called Stable Diffusion. And Lenza is the one making lots of money from this while the programmers behind Stable Diffusion are not. And I can't find for the life of me if it's even legal for Lenza to use the free open source model and profit from it in Lenza. Is that legal? I can't find any information on it, but even if it is... Morality wise, it's still questionable because obviously laws don't equal morality. <laughs> Texas. Because if you think that this company is taking advantage of this free code, they're also taking advantage of you, the consumer, and the artists that the Stable Diffusion model learns from. Lenza's payment model is very weird and predatory. It's a $50 free trial. Yeah, you can sign up for the free trial, but oh, whoops, I forgot about it, and now I'm being charged $50. And even after entering the free trial, if you do remember to cancel it, you still have to pay three or four dollars to get upwards of 50 to 200 images, and that guarantees that Lenza profits off of you, even if you cancel before the free trial is over. Plus, what I just said is a slap in the face to artists. Why would you go pay a reasonable chunk of change for a commission artist to draw you when you can pay three to four dollars for 100 different images generated by an AI? It's indubitably mass-producing art, turning art, a very personable thing, into a mass-produced commodity, which I and a lot of other people find a little scary. Like this person said, my main concern has never really been people using Lenza or Midjourney to make fantasy portraits or album art, but the fact that these tools are going to be made to work on a commercial level. Why would a studio hire me to work in my own style when they can take all my work, run it through a data set, and have similar quality work for a tiny fraction of the price? And that's exactly it. The combination of being able to say, in the style of, and the cheapness of it, it is just a terrible combination for artists' futures and livelihoods. So that was a little look into my other side of the argument of why AI art can actually be very problematic, especially in the future. So while AI art can be a fun tool now to create funny little images like this, or have it turn you into a Game of Thrones character. Remember to support and commission from human artists because it's a rough world out there. <laughs> so I know I couldn't get into the intricacies of everything. I'm not a philosophy professor, but feel free to add to the conversation below and I'll see you next time. Bye.